Hello, YouTube. I make a video about um subject of right to die uh, universal. Euthanasia and uh, the ability for people who are suffering and extreme pain, mental, physical. Aging, not wanting to be kept alive against their will, and so on. It just seems to follow in accordance with the much vaunted principle of bodily autonomy. If we cannot choose to have some way out, some escape valve in a peaceful, clean, dignified manner. Mm. Then what freedom do we actually have? What control do we actually have over ourselves? And we are the only ones that can experience it's what we experience, our pain, our suffering, our particular thresholds or abilities to cope. Other people can't feel what we feel when they say, oh, just, you need to just fight on through, you need to just overcome, you need to just, uh, Think positive. You know, they truly are just so unaware, so unable to empathize, I think, with just how bad a life can be. Yeah. And it just seems like they will use their positive, life affirming mindset and their particular subjective assessment of how their quality of life is going to deny anyone from receiving, from saying that they don't like it, they don't want to play in the game anymore. Um, they're tired of being on the treadmill of, say they have chronic pain issues, uh, terrible disabilities and untreatable. You go to doctor after doctor, um, test after test, nothing. Um, but I don't think many people fully understand what it's like. They just say, oh, find a way to go. Take some pills, take some medication. And I'm 
not fine with people taking medication and going to psychiatrist and uh, trying out various forms of treatment, but it's no guarantee, no silver bullet that's going to end your suffering. And, uh, it was just the fact that as you age, more and more of these health problems are just barring any radical reversal of aging treatments and I know the scientific research is ongoing to reverse aging, repair cells, gene therapy. Uh, we have people like Aubrey de Grey and David Sinclair and a bunch of scientists working on this. Not a lot of investment. Uh, Uh, it wouldn't be too good for the pharmaceutical companies, I suppose. People were healthier. But, uh, that's an aside. But, barring all this technology and stuff, we're going to age. We're going to decline our bodies, our minds, our appearances. Um, and uh, not everyone wants that. <laughs> not everyone wants to end up incapacitated in a nursing home or running away or being hooked to every tube in the book. Just Uh, essentially sucking resources with no quality of life. I think there's too much emphasis in medical ethics, medical bioethics, or the Hippocratic Oath on this ideal of do no harm, but they apply that to mean do not kill, just always keep alive. Keep the body alive. And quality, suffering, pain, whether the individual want, whatever the individual actually wants, the choices they would make, that's not accounted for. It's just keep the body alive. And I think that is seriously flawed logically and morally. And I think we should really be talking about quality of life and suffering and personal choice in regards to an individual wanting to live or die. Uh, but it seems we don't have that choice. It seems that people make painless, easier methods legal, hard to obtain. And then we do have this biologically neurologically ingrained survival, self-preservation instinct that fight or flight, it's not some easy thing, even if you want to end your pain, if you really want non-existence, 
It's not easy to just do stuff like shoot yourself, jump off a bridge, and all these messy, sloppy means that are the, the only things that people have to resort to. Uh, but people are even trying to prohibit that in some way, so it just... Uh, You know, putting nets over the Golden Gate Bridge, for example. People will also say, uh, if universal euthanasia right to assisted suicide easy not really hard purchase of nebutal or some substance that they use to uh, peaceful pill or helium bags or whatever is available people would there would be this mad rush and people would be uh, just dropping like flies, and uh, I'm not exactly sure that would be the case. I mean, I think there would be an uptick somewhat, but I mean, but let's dissect that argument when you just when you actually think about it. Those people making that counter argument are actually kind of proving the pessimist, uh, anti natalist haters of society kind of right, saying that, well, actually, yeah, the society and this world are so shitty that if there was this quick, easy means of self-deliverance, so many people would opt for it. <laughs> it's like, then I guess your life is wonderful, uh, ultra-optimistic, uh, we can achieve and overcome everything ideal isn't actually correct. <laughs> And then people might bring up um, as a counter argument that the person could over could is not could overcome and they will miss out on so many opportunities if they die they will miss out on this pleasure, that pleasure, whatever. I'll leave aside the fact, I guess, that uh, if you are really wanting to die, there's so much suffering in your life. I mean, I don't know how much. Trip to Disneyland is really going to help relieve that suffering, but it's just sort of they don't also account for the fact that if you die, that you are prevented from future worse suffering, from from 
potentially dying in a extremely horrific, terrible way. They talk about all the good that you'll miss out on. What about all the bads, the diseases? If you continue to age, you're more, more likely to get cancer, heart disease, Alzheimer's, dementia. We could go through all the list. You'd also have to say that uh, in some ways there are goods in the same way that there are potential goods that won't be experienced. There's also lots of bads that won't be experienced, that will be avoided, which is a good. And that sort of gets up the whole asymmetry thing, I guess. And the idea that if you don't exist, you can't really miss out because there's no actual subject, there's no person with desires, interest. There's no there's no one there to desire doing this or doing that. Which I guess gets more philosophical. Um, and all of our pleasures basically come from sort of this lack or wanting or craving or needing to fulfill some urge, some compulsion within us. And when you're non-existent, there is no more, there is no brain, there is no psychology with compulsions, desires, needs for love, or anything like that, so who is actually missing out? You could ask that question, I suppose. Then a lot of people want to call people who kill themselves uh, cowards. I see this as the ultimate insult, the ultimate cruel, uh, sadistic, uh, ill-informed remark. I don't. It takes a ton of guts in overcoming of this fear to do something like jump off a bridge, to do something like shoot yourself or slit your wrist or do or inflict some sort of bodily harm to yourself. If it's so easy, if it's the easy way out in a cowardly way, then why don't you do it? To these people, people did say that. Okay, you. Why don't you stand on the very edge of a building and start tipping over and see if you get scared? Isn't that a definition of cowardly? I mean, uh, these pro lifers are just not too much going on in there, I guess, to be honest. <laughs> Most of them are just as, I'm happy, I got a house, I got a job, everything's fine for me, so extend that to everyone else. If I could overcome my drug addiction, you can too. If you can overcome my depression with some Prozac, you can too. No, it's not a simplistic fairy world asshole.
where everything can be overcome and everything can be one. Where the good always wins in all this. Not everyone does want to live in a wheelchair or declining functionality or, or not being able to leave their house or pick any number of the plethora of conditions found in a medical dictionary. Yeah. Trying to think of anything else on this topic. I think that's about it for now. Let's see.